and to thank uh, Deputy Coran and Sinn Féin for bringing forward this uh, motion, which we obviously uh, support. Um, I think any contribution to people who are being absolutely hammered at the moment with the cost of living uh, increases is something that would uh, be welcomed um, and we're happy to support it. Uh, but I just want to really set out um, what I think needs to be a really comprehensive and radical package to deal with the in inflation cost of living crisis that people are suffering at the moment because uh, uh, I think it really requires us to uh, to recognise there's something rotten in the way our economic system operates. And if we don't get to the bottom of that, uh, we're not really going to solve this problem and we're not going to stop lurching from crisis to crisis, which is what we do. Um, and in essence, we lurch to crisis from crisis because we allow the market to, to, to dictate uh, what happens in our society. Uh, commercial concerns rather than planning, planning for the needs of society. So take the, de take the mess at Dublin Airport at the moment, right? That is a supply chain, COVID related supply chain bottleneck. That's what the government come back. When they come back at our criticism, they say it's not our fault, it is a COVID related supply chain bottleneck. That's what's in the speech. Now, what does that actually mean? It's just jargon, it's rubbish, isn't it, really, to, to sort of <laughs> try and cover up what's actually happening. Now, what actually that means is the CEO, formerly of Brown Thomas and then of, uh, uh, of D Dublin Airport Authority, what those two things have to do with each other, like, baffles me. Right, so somebody who used to run Brown Thomas is running the DAA, and another person who's running it is a former Goldman Sachs banker. And they're running the DAA, and during COVID, they say, we're going to get rid of 1,000 workers because there's not as many people traveling uh, as there used to be. So we will take advantage of that opportunity to get rid of people. And when we know we have to rehire them, because they knew they'd have to rehire them, we'll give them absolutely rubbish contracts uh, so that we can have essentially a workforce that you can turn on and turn off like a tap where they'll only get a guarantee of 20 hours uh, but they have to be on call for 40 hours and they're getting 14 euro an hour. Now is it any wonder that people aren't exactly jumping over themselves for those jobs uh, or that they have a problem with retaining people in those jobs? Um, because they want to hire them, for, they don't want to pay them properly they want a turn-off, turn-on uh, workforce. That's what an actual supply chain bottleneck looks like. It's people running our most important piece of national transport infrastructure on a for-profit basis at the expense of the workers that are actually needed to make the place function. Treat them like dirt, flexible, so that they're flexible, uh, but of course eventually the workers just don't want to do that. Uh, but the people at the top are paying themselves a package of 366,000 euro, paying uh, pensions, uh, and they're also now deciding to run two airports down in Saudi Arabia for one of the most brutal dictatorships in the world, and they're also uh, setting up uh, off-duty, uh, duty-free shops all over the world because they're interested in money. They're not interested in making our infrastructure work. Uh, they're interested in money. Uh, now. Does that sound familiar in terms of some of the other things that are affecting the cost of living? Like the cost of housing and accommodation and rents. That the people running the sector are interested in making money out of it. So actually, if there's a shortage of housing, they make more money. In fact, they have absolutely no interest in, in creating a situation where there might be enough supply of housing or indeed an excess supply of housing, why would they possibly do that? Because then they couldn't make as much money. And that's how our housing sector works. And you can go through the list uh, of uh, areas, you know, uh, where it is people making money rather than supplying. Food was just mentioned. 
I mean, food. Our entire agri system has been set up for an export market, global market led approach rather than for actually meeting the need for food and a diversity of food supplies that would actually be necessary to deliver locally produced food of all types uh, to the people of this country uh, on a sustainable, secure basis. No, we're geared up for the market and we're geared up for the beef barons and certain people who control the dairy sector to make money. Right? And it doesn't work for the producers, it doesn't work for the ordinary consumers, but by God does it work for the beef barons and by God does it work for Tesco's and all the rest of them. And that is the elephant in the room. Because while ordinary people are hammered with a cost of living crisis, Tesco's profits through the roof. Uh, energy companies profits through the roof, Shell's profits through the roof, BP's profits through the roof, corporate profits in this country through the roof. Right? That's what's going on. So inflation isn't some sort of interesting economic phenomena. Inflation is about the people who control the things that we need to make our society function making money. Sorry. That's what it's about. And you can look at any sector you like. Uh, so that's what we have to address. And my God, even Boris Johnson had now under pressure been forced to acknowledge at some level that point and introduce a windfall tax on the energy profits of the companies making a fortune. And Oxfam in the last week produced a report saying if we just put a 1.5% tax on everybody in this country who has more than 4 million euro in wealth, we could raise 5 billion euro an annually. Now, my God, would that do a lot to protect ordinary people from the cost of rising costs of living to deliver affordable housing and so on? Deputy I think Mc it would. Deputy